this video, I aim to answer two things. One is if the MatePad T8 is a capable entry-level tablet for learning, and two, if Huawei's App Gallery solution to Google Play Store is ready for prime time. Let's start with the tablet first. At 5,990 pesos, this MatePad is the latest and cheapest tablet you can get right now. Compared to a regular smartphone, the specs are underwhelming. We're looking at an entry-level MediaTek MT8768 paired with 2GB RAM and 32GB storage. You can expand that via micro SD slot if you need more space. If for some reason you need to take a photo in mediocre quality, the 5MP main camera and 2MP selfie are present. For the rest of the specs, the T8 features a decently sized 5100 mAh battery, single firing speaker, micro USB port, and an 8 inches IPS LCD display. And yes, this EMUI 10 version based on Android lacks Google Apps and services. Sure, you can call the specs garbage and everything, but for a tablet, it's surprisingly good. I can still use my social media and some of my productivity apps without any hassle. I initially thought that this tablet would be slow and sluggish, but I guess optimization has its magic. So what else? I like the size of the display, it's bright enough indoors and even if the default color temperature is a bit off, Huawei still lets you adjust the temperature in the setting. Oh, and there's no water brightness here so you need to adjust the slider manually. Not a deal breaker, but it's worth noting. The Wi-Fi modem inside it is quite reliable too. However, there were times when it was hogging the connection, causing the other devices to slow down. Pro tip, make sure to toggle on the network speed indicator so you can see whether there's suspicious network activity in the background. The south firing speaker is tinny, but it's loud and clear even at max volume. The one thing that I really hate here is the placement. Since it's in the middle, regardless of your horizontal orientation, you will block the speakers easily. And yes, I did play games on it just to gauge how far I can take the chipset, but as expected, Battle Royale games are nearly unplayable, with casual games being the sweetest part for this tablet. Given the limited RAM amount, multitasking here is nearly impossible. I tried playing Spotify in the background while using other apps and 80% of the time, the music would stop playing. The best security you get here is by using a pin code, but phase unlock is also here should you wish a faster way of getting into the tablet. But then again, you're sacrificing security. Ah yes, to build. This tablet is only available in deep sea blue color. The frame is made of plastic, but the back seems like metal which is something I really miss from smartphones. Overall, the build is nothing special, but it's well constructed. It feels like it can handle a beating, but it's still best to get a flip cover that Huawei did not include even though I pre-ordered. Anyway, that's for performance. You can definitely get the basic things done here. It can last a whole day easily with an average of 6 hours of screen time. You can even connect a Bluetooth keyboard to make things a bit more productive when typing. So what about App Gallery? It's the main reason why you are probably hesitant to get the MatePad Z8. After all, we are tied to Google services. Most of us use Gmail, YouTube, Google Drive, and probably other apps that are tied to our Google accounts. So how's the experience? Well, just like my relationship, it's complicated. You see, you have App Gallery as your Play Store substitute. The very first thing that I don't like here is that there's a 3 second ad every time I open App Gallery. Second is the limited app support, obviously. Third, you have to type almost always the exact words of the app or else it's not going to show up. Since most apps are not available yet, you need to download and install APK or executable Android app packages as a workaround. At first, I was using APK Pure, but when I learned about Pedal Search for App Gallery, it nearly changed everything. Pedal Search is downloadable from App Gallery and works even better than Huawei's App Store. Once installed, just search for an app, download the APK file, and wait for installation prompt. Once you're out of that hole, congrats, you're now on your way to basic Android experience. Well, except you're not. See, if you download any Google app, it won't work. If you download non-Google apps but require you to log in with a Google account, surprise surprise, it won't work. Well, at least some of them. 
Ever since Facebook met privacy concerns, I've switched to Google to sign into apps. And if I can use Google even just to sign into apps, well, that's a huge indicator that App Gallery isn't made for me. One of my favorite apps is YouTube. While I can always pin a shortcut icon to my home screen with the help from any browser, the playback quality is mediocre. Even at a lower resolution, you will notice videos skipping frames. This may not be the case with more expensive Huawei mobile devices, but if you're buying an entry-level or cheap mobile device from Huawei, then it's worth taking note. If you are a tech savvy that doesn't mind getting your hands dirty to make Google apps and services work on this tablet, then sure, the MatePad T8 is an easy recommendation. But if you're not, you shouldn't get this tablet. In fact, you shouldn't get any Huawei device at this point. Even for a guy like me who knows how to install Google services on this tablet, I don't like the inconvenience of taking more steps just to make a device work for me. Because at the end of the day, it's the device that should be working for you. So that's it for my Huawei MatePad C8 and App Gallery review. I'll see you in the next one and as always, stay safe.